Hello everyone, my name is Nick and today it's time for my houseplant tour for summer 2022. So today we're going to take a walk around my apartment and I'm going to spotlight every single one of my 300 plus houseplants. It's a labor of love, but it's definitely easier than when I had like 450 houseplants, so keeping that in mind. My houseplant collection, as many of you know, is ever evolving. I'm getting rid of things or things die or I give things away and I bring new things in, so you're going to see a different selection than what you've seen in previous houseplant tours, of course. And my aesthetic, hopefully, has been improving over the last couple of years, so hopefully you get some inspiration from this and some ideas and maybe see a couple plants that you might want to add to your wish list. So on that note, let's go ahead and get started. So before we get too in-depth, I just want to give you a quick overview of my space. So this is my living room right here. I have my kitchen, which is just kind of included with the living room. It's one of those setups. My entryway, where I was just standing. The bathroom, we're not going to go in there today because we just don't need to. There's no plants. There's me. And my bedroom right here. But we are literally going to explore everything in depth, so buckle up. But we might as well start in the entryway because this is where I walk in my apartment. So hanging up here, I have this Ripsalis pilocarpa that has a lot of fun energy. This jungle cactus that also looks really nice hanging in the vanda basket, kind of different than what you'll typically see. I have this Zamiacolcus zamiafolia right here, kind of tucked away in the back corner since it's pretty dark back here, but it does pretty well. Also, this Dracaena reflexa has some pretty fun character. It gives me like Dr. Seuss vibes, but there's some pretty cool plants, but you don't normally just see them with just one shoot like this. And then I have the mirror here where I just said hello. Up above, I have a bunch of house plants. Most of them are duplicates of ones that I have around my home. Maybe a piece fell off or something, but there are two that I don't have around my home, which is this Philodendron micans right here, or Philodendron heteracea micans. And what I believe is this Aglaenema commutatum, just a, a plain species Aglaenema commutatum. And on the floor, I have this Sansevieria trifasciata uh, Laurentii, the yellow-edged Dracaena, or Sansevieria. They're Dracaenas now, but you know what I'm saying. If you know, you know. There is this Dracaena Fragrance Golden Coast. That sun is, as always, going to be playing devil's advocate, but we will get through it. Uh, really, really nice, very columnar. Doesn't take up a lot of space, but has a lot going on. And this Aspidistra, this looks like you could use a drink. Uh, Aspidistra uh, Milky Way. At least that's what I purchased it as. I'm aware that that might not be exactly what this is. Uh, you can see here on the counter, I have a bunch of plants that, uh, these are ones I really just do projects with, with YouTube. A lot of these were from recent videos and I just haven't found a spot, although I've been scheming, trust. There is this Hoya Australis from uh, the Van de Basket video. There is this Philodendron Pink Princess from uh, my little Steve Leaves unboxing that I did on TikTok, if you haven't seen that already. I have the Syngonium Chia Pents that I am currently propagating. Uh, this is not for a project. This is just sitting here on where I eat. Uh, this is a Pilea grandifolia, which I absolutely love the foliage. It looks like mint or basil or some kind of herb. Everyone always asks me what kind of herb it is, and I love that. That's why I put it here. Uh, there's this Aglinema commutatum silver bay, probably the most prevalent uh, uh, most available Aglinema out there on the market, commonly referred to as a Chinese evergreen. And the last one on the counter here is this Philodendron Arubicens Red Emerald, but you will see my much larger one in my bedroom in a little bit. But most of these I have doubles of, or that's why they're kind of not in a space, because I'm just kind of figuring out what am I going to do with them? But they are gorgeous. I obviously would like to do something with them. So over my kitchen, in this back corner here, this is actually an avocado pit. I just started this. It's one of those like larger, more green avocados if you're wondering why it looks so weird. Uh, and then there is this Philodendron Brantianum just sitting in the water and this Hoya gracilis. This is from my how to repot Hoya video and it's actually doing really well. It's put off some nice foliage and you can see there are two things of new growth, but I have to clean it off with rubbing alcohol all the time because 
it's at my stove, so it gets kind of oily and greasy. <laughs> uh, as with these, I do have to clean them off every now and again. I had a smoothie explosion recently, so I think I still have some residue. <laughs> uh, but this one right here is an Anthurium polystichum. I really love this one. A new houseplant for me, but I've been obsessed with it. Also, this uh, Hoya globulosa, really fun fuzzy Hoya with that fun venation. There's a Peperomia, uh, what is this? Peperomia velatina, a Begonia elegnifolia, kind of looks like a Hoya, and a Pseudoripsalis ramulosa, which these are all from stevesleaves.com. And if you haven't already, you can use code Philly Foliage to save 22% on your next purchase from Steve's Leaves and I do get a small commission, so thank you in advance. There's a basil right here, but I go through basil all the time because or whatever herb I have of the week is usually just sitting here getting torn apart by me constantly. There is this Japanese holly fern right here. I think this is a Sertomium. I really love this fern. It's just starting to reach into my sink here. And does it get in the way sometimes? Yes, but I, I love that. There is this Pelionia pulchra, really fun dark foliage. And this Monstera adansonii here, which you can see all my planters in the kitchen are kind of like cream colored, except these are just obviously waiting to find their space. But I kind of, as much as I don't like white on white kitchens, we can all agree that these white planters go really well with the uh, marble backsplash. So I'm a big fan. And let's move our way around the perimeter of the home. So you're going to see that most of my plants literally work their way around the perimeter. I don't really have anything in the center of my home other than these guys right here, typically this is really the only thing, and the um, cast iron plant right here, the only things that are really hanging out in the center of my home. Uh, this is also from Steve's Leaves, actually. This is a Begonia natunansis. I never know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that foliage is just killer. This is really like the Begonia that got me really into Begonias this year. And then this Aglinema Baikaw. I've been really feeling this. I got this like right when I moved in my apartment. So I've had it for a little over a year and it's really starting to grow a lot. And I just really love this, the thin grassy, but like illuminated foliage with this yellow outline. And then I have what's left of my Natal Mahogany, which I was like a spokesperson for this houseplant for a couple years, but the scale has really taken a hold of it. I think it's a me problem. I'm not sure if that's a problem that most of you would have. I still am obsessed with the foliage, but this one, as you can see, it's really starting to just die back. So I'm thinking I might be ousting this from my home in a short while, but I think I will be replacing it once I have the space for a new one because I really do love this houseplant. It's a Trichilia emetica is the scientific name. And my rabbit's foot fern, the Devalia phygiensis. I really love this fern. This is like the fern that's jump-starting my love for ferns, as well as the one over there. I really love that. And another one that you'll see in a little bit, but I've been just really into ferns. I was a fern killer for many years, and now I am just feeling the fern fever. I want all the ferns. I want them everywhere. Up here is an Epipernum aureum, just a golden pothos. I'm looking forward to this starting to trail down and kind of envelop is that the word I'm looking for? Just kind of cover. Well, yes, it is the word I'm looking for. Just cover the mirror and look fun and the basket too. I think it'll look a lot better uh, once it starts growing. But that's why I purchased this plant because I figured if any plant's going to grow like six feet in one year, it's this plant. And then in front of the mirror here, I have this Drusena Janet Craig, which I love this house plant. This was a rescue actually. They came like completely frostbitten. Uh, back when I worked at the house plant store, and uh, the like, there was four plants I believe in the pot, in the pot, and then the uh, th two largest ones I had to remove because they were completely destroyed. But these two were like kind of alive, so I got to take them home for free, and I think it was totally worth it. It has so much energy, and I love the way it looks with these two plants down here. I have the Aglinema spring snow, really one of my favorite plants. It looks practically fake. Like this looks like a plant that you would find like at an AC Moore or a Michaels, like in their fake plant section, like straight up. And uh, the standard jade pothos, which this one right here is just sitting inside. This is uh, the plant that I was showing you guys in my uh, how to propagate a full pot of pothos in one with one vine. That's a mouthful right there, but you guys know what I'm saying. But it's going back in here. I just have to replant it, but for right now, it's just sitting inside there because you really wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't point that out, would you? And then I have my philodendron gloriosum right here, which is glorious as ever. I like how I have the mirror there, so it makes it look double as full. It's an illusion. 
but I think it works. Here's the newest leaf right here. I think this could use a little bit more humidity than it's receiving in my home from the way that the newest leaf is looking, but I don't know. Maybe I'm going to give it a repot soon, which I know you shouldn't normally repot your plants when they're struggling, but <laughs> I think it's just overflowing in there. And it tends to reach the end of the planter, and then since it's a creeping philodendron and not really one of those trailing or climbing philodendrons, these stems snap. And it's not fun, but because this also is constantly rooting down into the planter, I can usually just take a cutting and it's already a rooted plant. So that is at least something that it has going for it. This is a black Pagoda lipstick plant or an Aeschgenanthus longicollis. Here is a Hemigraphus alternantha. There is a Ruellia macoyana right here, beautiful foliage, and Stromanthi sanguinea triostar, all some really funky foliage right here, as well as this Cissus amazonica, which I moved this here like a month or two ago, and I'm just noticing that I don't think it's really happy about that. Some of that foliage in the back is uh, dying back, so maybe I should go ahead and move this back underneath the grow light where I had it in my bedroom prior, but uh, I guess the first thing I gotta do is go in there and remove some of that dead foliage, but we will get there. Here is my Begonia Milana Bellata. You will see I do keep a lot of plants in my home inside these glass enclosures. It's really great for houseplants that prefer higher humidity. It really does wonders for them. I highly recommend it. Uh, there is this Peperomia Caparata Grey Luna. Uh, Hoya Carnosa right here. I really just love this. Oh, well, out of focus. But I really just love this plain green Hoya. But this plant that's kind of getting in the way is this beautiful philodendron Mayoi, which is actually on the top of the shelf and it works its way down the side, but we will get up there in a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself. Also this one that is joining in with the mess here is a Seropegia uh, linearis uh, subspecies debilis, just the, like string of needles. There is a Rose of Jericho right here. It's a plant, it's not really a, whoops, sorry. It's, it's alive, it's dead. I don't really know how it works, but it's pretty cool. There is a uh, Sansevieria Arenbergii, the Samurai Sansevieria, a Monstera Adinsonii. This is one of the varieties, I'm not too, too sure on the top of my head, but oops, sorry, I bumped the camera there. But this was in one of my unboxing videos that I did from Gully Greenhouse. And the one in the back here is a Nautilacalyx Grandifleur, I think is the name, and a Hoya Wyetii. This is a Cissus adenopoda. I love this plant, but I'm going to have to figure something out because it's grabbing onto literally everything for dear life. Like, look, it's just like grabbing onto these Hoya leaves right here. It's just doing the most, which I love it doing the most. It works its way all the way up. Do you see it grabbing on up there? <laughs> so I have to figure something out for this, but at the same time, I'm like, just leave it. It's cool, I love it, but it's obviously just kind of taken over. And then in the back is a Sansevieria parva. There is a Peperomia scandens on this, well, kind of the top shelf, but not the top top. And a Hoya pubicalix, I believe this is the Royal Hawaiian Purple, which I like that I have it right next to this uh, Syndapsis pictus here because I think their foliage is so similar, but also so different. Sometimes you can't even really tell What's what? And this is the Silvery Anne version. You can see it's got that little bit of that uh, silver tinge around the edge, which is quite beautiful. There's another Monstera Adinsonii back there. This one's kind of messy. The more I go up, the worse it looks. That's kind of why I have it hiding back there. I will not lie. There is what I believe is a Philodendron Bernardo Pazii up there. You will see another one later on, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with that, as well as this Philodendron Brantianum up front with some really stunning foliage. Although I don't find this to be the easiest philodendron to grow, I find the foliage always comes in ridiculously small. So that's just my own experience. So if we go over here, here's another one inside the glass. This is a Biophytum sensitivum or the little tree plant. If I pull the glass off carefully, I'm sure many of you just had a mini heart attack there. Uh, this looks really, really gorgeous. And I uh, threw some of the seeds that had come because these have like seed pods on it that are constantly like exploding. Uh, so I have some new plants in there. So we will see how that goes. Let me try to do this. Okay, that could have been bad, but it was good. Alrighty, we have this Flibodium arium right here. 
the blue star fur and you can see it's getting illuminated from this Soltec Solutions aspect light which you can use code NICK2022 to save 15% and again I get a commission if you go ahead and use my code so thank you very much. I absolutely love this grow light. I think it looks amazing in my home. It fits in unlike other grow lights that don't fit in. This warm light really is the <laughs> color light that I use when the lights turn on when it gets dark out. So working our way up and then we'll come back down to here. Uh, let's see, there is this Sideraceus Fiscata right here. I love the little uh, purple hairs that this houseplant has as well as that silver streak down the center. I know it's kind of hidden right now, but it's a really cool houseplant. There's another Hoya Pubicalix right here. So working its way down, there's a lot of new growth on it, which I'm excited about. Ludistia Discolor, the Jewel Orchid, also really gorgeous. I love all of the colors and textures that's going on over here, as well as this ugly name of Modestum, which kind of grounds everything together with that plain green foliage. Kind of looks like a spathophyllum or a piece of leaf, but it's not. Peperomia elongata, beautiful foliage, as well as this uh, philodendron Bloody Mary, which, um, I don't know, it still needs to grow some more. The leaves are still kind of wimpy. And up here, Hoya macrophylla alba marginata, Sorry, it's a little shaky. I'm holding the end of the tripod, but you can see it's getting that nice red coloration to the leaves as it's stressing from the grow light that is very, very close to it. But everything else is a little bit further away. As we work our way down, there is this asparagus. Is this retrofractus? I believe that's it, but also just kind of feeling out its space, which I just once again love all the texture that is over here, and this really provides a lot. Uh, Syngonium erythrophyllum Yanocarti Road. This thing has finally dropped down in price with that beautiful red burgundy underside. So definitely one I recommend adding to your collection. This guy that's kind of getting in our way here is a Philodendron Burl Marks. Uh, this thing has not been the fullest grower. It definitely gets a little sparse, but it still grows. I wouldn't consider it difficult. But fortunately, it's a very inexpensive Philodendron because this is most often used as like a landscape Philodendron in the tropical areas of the United States, and I'm sure of the world, but that's my own experience. I have this Alocasia uh, Dawn. This was uh, a new one for me. This is one I actually unboxed over on my Patreon, which I highly recommend joining me over on for more houseplant content, but has this beautiful variegated foliage. Some of the older leaves have kind of turned brown. I haven't really cleaned this thing up. Obviously there are a couple leaves that could be snipped off, but I've just been kind of leaving it be. Oh gosh, so we are going to have a mess here. Let me move this alocasia out of the way because I am going to need to get in here. So we have this whole trellis right here, which I absolutely love. These two main plants on it are uh, my philodendron jerry horn. Thank you to all of you who helped me find out what this is. I could have not figured it out without you. And my syngonium chia pens, which I had over on the counter, but this is where it came from. Hiding behind there is this Discidia acuminata. You can kind of see it. Kind of fun. Really, really clumpy. And what else do we have on the trellis? There's this uh, philodendron tripartitum. There's actually a couple of them. Here's another one back here. I really love this plant. Philodendron pedatum. Here's some of it. There's more of it down here. There's also this uh, philodendron uh, Jose Buono. Here's a new leaf. Really lovely. I love how big the foliage is. Um, what else do we have? There is a Selenotherius chrysocardium, the uh, fishtail. Do I, I feel like I always get the name wrong, but I'm going to call it the fishtail cactus. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I'm going to just sit down on the floor. So I need to be honest with you guys. I don't get into the back shelf area of this often. I'm usually watering the front very often, but I really just need to pull the ones in the back out and water them today because it's been a couple of weeks, I will be honest. But I have this Hoya Elagiorum right here. It hasn't done nothing for me since I've had it for a couple of years. Uh, but this uh, Hoya Kimingiana, on the other hand, is really starting to spit out a lot of new growth. There's also this Hoya Hindu rope or the uh, Hoya carnosa compacta, as well as another gracilis, although I kind of love my smaller one even more. So in the back, it's going to be difficult to see, but hang with me. On the right, there is a Hoya pneumolarioides. The center is a Discidia obata, and the left is a Hoya crinkles tinkles. All right, this is going to be the challenge. So can we do this? Oh, we can do this. It's fine. So 
Here is a, oh, this is some TLC. This is a Ripsalis, uh, I think it's a Pachyterra. There's also a Sansevieria Kirkii, a Hoya Pubicalix Splash, a Ripsalis, oh god, I forget the name. It's like an African country. And then a Ripsalis Paradoxa. It's got some pretty thick foliage. And then the back. Oh my god, you can barely even see. <laughs> I clearly have not worn that in forever. It's a Lispismium cruciform. There is a cactus here. I forget the name of it. It's a mammalaria of some type. I will put it on screen. There is a Hoya Marillii. Clearly needs a really good drink. And a Hoya... Oh my gosh, what is that? It's like a, a Chelsea. Hoya Chelsea. That one's sitting in water, so it's kind of doing a little bit better. But uh, on the floor here, you'll see that I have this Monstera uh, Stanleyana variegata. It's actually right here. It's kind of a mess. I need to, oh gosh, it kind of, it, it came off the thing. It pulled itself off of its plant tape. So I need to figure something out with this. As well as the Philodendron Pink Princess. This is all, it's, it looks terrible, but it's all cuttings that I took from this one right here. So I'll show you that now. All right, let me stand back up because I'm not feeling good about sitting on the floor here. So here is a Hoya Lacunosa on the left. There's a Hoya Crassipes on the right. This is a Xerosicius Dengai. This thing is really feeling itself, growing a lot. I have this Monstera Deliciosa. This is a green variegated sport. Oops, knocked a piece off of my Peperomia Boivinii here, which I will cut to, but I'm gonna go back down. Don't worry, but why not talk about it? Looks like a Peperomia Hope, but apparently it's not. So I have this other weird Monstera here. Uh, I just hold on to it for science. And there's my Hoya Carii. There's my Ficus Audrey. Oh my God, all the way down there is my Sansevieria. Oh my God, you can not even see it. I don't even know why I'm trying. Uh, but it's a Pinguicula. Really cool Sansevieria, but you can't even see or tell. And then my Hoya Australis, which is huge. It's like literally 10 feet long, but I have it constantly just wrapping around this mess here. But I need to give this thing some more love. I think it's got some peduncles on it. It's getting ready to bloom. So I really need to pull it out and give it some more love. But if we work our way up in the window here, don't know how to light. Oh, the lighting's fine. So this is a Seropegia woodii variegata. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Discidia ovata, once again, this one's got some really nice red sun stressing and it's constantly producing flowers, which I really love. A Hoya Curtisii. Don't know if this is probably the one you're going to be able to see the least. But the foliage is so nice. Maybe you can see this. It gets like this, like, oh, well, it's out of focus, but it gets this like mint chocolate chip color foliage and light. I think it's absolutely stunning. And my string of pearls right here, which once again, the lighting might not be great, but y'all know what this plant is. I don't really need to give you the up close and personal. There's also a Seropegia. Uh, silver glory back here, but once again, that might be kind of difficult to see, but you can kind of see the foliage and how silver it is. Okay, so in these macrame hangers right here, I have this Ripsalis awaldiana, really getting long, and this Peperomia angulata. Then over in the windows, I have these uh, little wall pockets. I think I have these on my Amazon affiliate page, if you're curious, that will be in the link in the description. There is this Hoya Wietii inside this one, which the foliage is coming in like straight purple. Do you see this? Isn't that crazy? Kind of canoey. I don't know why it's looking so canoey right now. Uh, Ripsalis elliptica. This one's really small. I have another one that you'll see that's a little bit bigger. And another pseudo Ripsalis remulosa. I think I'm going to shove all of that plant in here with this one because I think it would be fun. Why not? Down the window, there's a whole lot going on in this window here. Uh, this is a Thematophyllum sprucianum, the foliage, question mark. Like, you guys have told me that it's getting too much light. You're right, I need to move it. But I just don't have a spot to move it to. So right now it's just dealing with it, but it's surviving. I also just gave it some systemics because I noticed some mealybugs. But I mean, the leaves are coming in fine. I just feel like you, obviously they're burning a little bit. But hiding underneath, there is this uh, Hoya abivada, also really starting to grow, which I'm excited about. Peperomia kimnachii. There's a Hoya carnosa. It's really kind of beat up, but the crimson queen. Aloe vera. This is my first houseplant ever. One of my friends gave it to me in like 2014. 
and this is the main plant right here, but all the other ones are babies, obviously, but even like this baby down here is huge, but yeah, I'm really happy about this, although it's starting to do that thing that owls do when they just kind of want to just pull themselves out of the planter. There's a variegated euphorbia back there, Hoya elliptica, Discidia russifolia, Hoya ban nong noi, Here's a, like a, 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 a I don't know, it's the blue cactus. It's like, I don't know, I'll put it on screen. Uh, this is a, it's, oh, it's a Crassula Tom's Thumb. This is the Asparagus Meyeri. And then there, oh my God, this looks terrible, don't judge me, but it's a Peperomia Cubensis Variegata, but it's just it's putting off some new growth. I, I'm not gonna get rid of it yet. Uh, there's my Tetrastigma Voinierianum here. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, some of the new growth, or not the new growth, the older growth is getting really ratty. I was just actually picking some of it off recently, but the new growth is coming in, as you can see. I'm feeling hopeful. It's just really not a good houseplant, as much as I love it. It's just not a great houseplant. I also have this Aglianema. Uh, is it Red Valentine? Is it Ruby? I don't know. They all look the same, so you can tell me. And inside, there's randomly this Camadoria elegans, I think, just a parlor palm. I don't know where this came from, but it just sprouted. It looks like it's got like spider mite damage or something, but yeah, I don't know where it came from, but it's just, I'm sure maybe a couple of you are wondering about that. I have my Amidrium zippelinianum right here, kind of funky, got a lot of character. A Begonia venosa, Hoya fichii. Really love this foliage. Definitely one of my new favorite Hoyas. Uh, Peperomia dulcetii, which is also one of my new favorite peperomias. I really, really love the foliage on this. Both of these are, actually all three of these are from Steve's Leaves, just to give you some more idea of what they have in stock. There is my Piper Parmatum slash Crocatum, whatever you want to say. I messed up with this. I repotted it over the winter. It got mad at me, but it's still alive, so I can't complain. This is Asparagus Plumosa slash Asparagus Cetaceous. You can choose your own journey there. My Monstera Deliciosa Albo Variegata, kind of getting mixed in with my Schifflera Actinophylla Nova right here, which has some pretty funky foliage. Really a big fan of this plant. Definitely one of my favorite house plants that I grow in my home. Although I do think I'm giving it a little too much light. I do think it needs to move a little bit away from the window. Um, but if we go back down here, there's Anthurium Superbum. Some of these are going to be a little difficult to see. Obviously, there's kind of a mess of plants right here, but I have this Ficus uh, Elastica Ruby. There is a Sansevieria, uh, is that Cylindrica Boncolensis or Boncol, just the starfish Sansevieria. You can't really see it very well from this angle. This is uh, Epiphyllum, it begins with an A, I can't remember. Uh, there's a Cissus Rotundifolia. And a sense of area golden flame. It's in bloom, but it's just so back there. You can definitely not really see it as well as I would like you to. There is this Peperomia tetragona or Padiolata, whatever you want to say. I am cool with Peperomia quadrangularis right here. This one with the light. Oh, well, you can kind of see it. Emphasis on kind of. Cissus rhombifolia, Elendonica. This thing, ugh, it's mad at me. It's not forgiving me. I don't know about that. Uh, I have this Hoya Wyetii variegata right here. Ripsalis pentaptera. Hiding back here, there is a Hoya pachycleta and a Hoya carnosa crimson princess in the Vanda baskets. Alrighty, <laughs> almost around the perimeter. There's a lot going on here. There's a Syndapsis trubii moonlight. It's pretty big. Uh, on the pole here is a Monstera subpanata, but it doesn't have a single leaf on it. It's just this leafless vine, so we are just being patient. Uh, as well as this Philodendron Ataba poensi. I think I'm going to repot this as the one that you're going to see in my bedroom soon to make room for one of those houseplants that are chilling on the counter. Down below here, I have this. On the left is a Peperomia preschii folia, and on the right is a Primalina sinensis. Then there is a Peperomia hoffmanii on the left. On the right is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. On the floor here, I have this, oh my God, ignore all the Peperomia leaves on the floor there, but uh, this Monstera Peru. There is a Zamiacolcus Zamifolia Raven back here. 
And my Aglaenema Red Emerald. I absolutely love this Aglaenema. Also kind of one of my favorite hair, uh, plants. I don't know what I was about to say there. One of my favorite plants. It's just so amazingly gorgeous. Gives me Croton vibes, but without all of the headache that Crotons give me, at least in this environment where I live here in Philadelphia. A philodendron uh, Florida. And then I have some air plants right here. I know this one down here on the bottom is a, a Tlansia Iantha. I don't know what the one up here is. Anthurium gracile, kind of fun how it's coming out of the bottom of the banda basket, although I'm aware the foliage is not really anything to write home about. You don't need to tell me, I know. Anthurium clarinervum, clarinervium. I always say that one wrong. And an orchid, this is uh, Bretonia shelob tolkien. I do not water it enough. You can tell very, very clearly, but I'm thinking about getting a spider plant for this spot. I think it might look a little better up there. Um, there's a Peperomia ruby cascade. I'm like at the coffee table filming here, so this might be kind of difficult, but... Oh, sorry, sweet pea. Muffin's under the table and I just bumped her. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Wanna come say hello? Oh my goodness. Also kind of try to avoid all the little leaf pieces on the ground here. I have 300 plus plants. There are obviously leaves and bits of dirt all over my home. I don't know why I need to convince you guys otherwise, but hi, sweetie. Oh, Muffin is so sweet. She's just the sweetest. And I'm so sorry I woke you up from your nap, but it was about time that she comes out and says hello. You guys know how much of an attention hog she is when it comes to me filming. So over here, on the left, this is a, another Syngonium erythrophyllum Yanocarti Road. This is a Hoya Crinkle 8. There's me again. There's also an Aspidistra aladia right next to me, but it's a little difficult to see, or a cast iron plant. Another Aeschcananthus longicollis, or the Black Pagoda lipstick plant. Down real quick, there is a, a N, Epipernum aureum, or Golden Pothos, and you can't even see, but there's a Hoya retusa, but I have another one in my room, so I'm not gonna go out of my way. Oh my gosh, Muffin is just constantly rubbing against my butt cheeks because she just needs attention and she's not happy that I'm talking, but I'm not talking to her. Oh my goodness, sweet pea, you're going to have to deal with it though because I'm only like halfway done. Okay, so on this side, there's a Syndapsis pictus. I think that's like the silver splash. Meconia ternata, the plush vine. Calathea lancifolia, or peacock plant. There is on the ground here. I have room, as you can see, one and two spots for new plants. I just don't know what I'm gonna put there. Clus uh, Peperomia clusii folia. This is a, I don't know what this is. It's some kind of Santavaria, but it's the one that inspired me to get the pinguicula that you could barely see <laughs> over in the window. Calathea mosaica. Uh, Syngonium podophyllum albovariegatum marble, a mouthful. And also just so gorgeous, this uh, Calathea, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I call it the Calathea because I was going to call it Calathea ornata, but it's a uh, Aglaenema chocolate, but it just looks so similar to Agli, oh my gosh, Calathea ornata. So y'all know what I'm saying. You feel what I was going for. This is a an Asplenium dimorphum ex diform. I really, really love this fern. This is the other fern I was hinting at earlier that I just absolutely love the foliage. There's this Nematanthus right here. I kind of forget the name. It's like Wetsteinii ex hertelis. Actually, I think that's it. And uh, Sansevieria masoniana, the whale fin, although it's not looking very whale finny. It's looking a little fish finny right now. But this is just what I have going on in my bar cart here, which I think this is everything in my living room. Wow, I really tried to speed through that, but there's just so much and it's very blurry. We have Muffin here waiting for more attention. But just to give you guys another peek of the living room, this is what's going on here. I'm standing from the kitchen. There is the TV area from back here. There is this area where I do my work. Hello. And the kitchen. So let's move on over to the bedroom. So this is what we are working with here. I have my bed area, of course. Oh, here comes Muffin, of course, star of the show. Hi, sweetie. 
get used to this. Okay, and then I have my whole shelf area back here, which is just kind of my <laughs> unconventional way of <laughs> growing a bunch of houseplants. It just doesn't look great. I know some people really like the appearance of this, but it's just a mess to me. And, you know, I have to admit, the white furniture doesn't really fit my aesthetic anymore, but it works very, very well. I have to digress. So, up here on the top left, I have this Syngonium auritum. Pretty fun with these winged leaves. Here's a Hoya Shepardii, really, really deep green leaves. Another, oh, there she goes, uh, Syndapsis Moonlight. This is just a cutting I took off of the larger one in the living room. My Peperomia Fuzzy Mystery. There's a Peperomia Tingo Maria back here on the glass. You can't see it very well. I think this is, we're gonna just kind of deal with that. Uh, this is my Epipernum Orium Neon, or the Neon Pothos. I purchased this as a Schifflera actinophylla uh, dazzle or variegata, but I don't know if it's an actinophylla. This had the larger leaves and it could just still be young, but I have a hunch this is just like a funky variegated arboricola. So that's what I'm going to put on the screen today. This is, as you can see, a Ripsalis bacifera subspecies horrida and a Peperomia hope. Here's the actual Peperomia hope in comparison to the the knockoff, well not knockoff, the species, this is I guess the knockoff of the Boivinii if you think about it, or Boivinii, I don't know how to pronounce the other one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, this is a philodendron uh, painted lady. This newer foliage is like not as robust as the older foliage. And a, another Serapegia, uh, the, the, the linear subspecies Debilis. Here is a Hoya breviolata. A little fiddle, Ficus lyrata, little fiddle, uh, Anthurium magnificum, and a Peperomia obtusifolia variegata. Down here, this one doesn't look that great. I have another one that you'll see in a couple minutes, but it's a oh, leaf literally just fell off of it. A Hoya affinity to Bretonia. Here is a Hoya David Comingii. All the leaves are down here. It's kind of less going on up here. Hoya Iris Marie, I really, really love this Hoya. It's just a really fun grower. This, I think, is a Peperomia angulata. I'm not positive, but I believe it is. Then there's a Peperomia argyria back there, and then this is a Monalena? Monalena primuliflora. It doesn't look too great. It hasn't grown since I got it, and it was kind of an experiment. <laughs> I don't know if the experiment's going very well but I wanted to try it. There is a Monstera obliqua back there. It's one of the varieties I forget off the top of my head. If I figure it out, I will leave it in, you know, the, the whatever is popping up right here where my finger is. This is a Begonia gamella, another Hoya ban yong Noi. Looks different than the other one, but I just trust they both are because I like Call me naive, but I like to believe what I'm told. Uh, this is uh, Hoya multiflora, which has no blooms on it right now, but you can see this peduncle right here is about to bloom a little bit, and this one is just getting going again with some new buds. A philodendron uh, white princess. You can see all the flowers actually that fell off recently, as well as how sticky the glass is because it's very, the flowers are very, uh, they produce a lot of sap. Uh, this, what, did I just say this, Philodendron White Princess? Okay, we're good. So this is a Aglaenema Pictum, I think. I purchased this as an Aglaenema Tricolor Echo, but uh, I think it's just a regular Pictum, which I didn't purchase as the Tricolor Pictum, I should be clear. Tricolor Echo is a completely different one. But this looks like a Species Pictum, so funny how that works. Uh, this is a Hoya, I forget the name of it actually. It's not a Hoya, it's a Peperomia, <laughs> I knew that. Uh, uh, the, the, the red something, jungle red. Philodendron squamiferum with the fun red stem, or the petioles. This is a Cissus quadrangularis. Oh my God, there's a leaf on it. It's been a long time. I think that's pretty neat. Obviously it's the, um, well, the stems here that you can't really see that are why I grow this plant. I think it's really funky. And we have this Peperomia Preskii folia in the group partner penis pot. 
some red on the back of the leaves that my other one doesn't have. Another Peperomia Hoffmanii. There's a Sansevieria Fernwood back there. Uh, Raphidophora Hayi? Hayi? I forget. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. It's got that whole, you can see right there. That's all new. I didn't even realize that was there until now. Euphorbia leuconera. I really love the foliage on this. I think it loses this white venation as it gets more mature, but I don't care. I still love it. Uh, Hoya pubicalix. This is one of my first Hoyas. There's a Peperomia moonset back there. It's going to be difficult to see, though. It's kind of like an Incana, but greener and thinner. Uh, this, I was told from the people who sold it, was a type of Sansevieria kirkii. I don't know, but you can see the foliage is pretty neat. Anthurium vichii back here. Doesn't really look like a vichii though. It's still kind of young and funky. Uh, Drymonia cherubogana. This one looks a little different than my other one that you'll see in a couple minutes and I'm just seeing now. It looks like we have some new something right here. So I'm happy about that. There is a Rapus excelsa or a lady palm and a Peperomia viridis variegata. So this is Peperomia uh, Vershafeltii. Hoya Rattusa, you couldn't see this earlier, but now you can see this one. And this Peperomia Scandens, but it's like a weird gray clone. You can see the foliage is very different. Um, okay, now we're down here. And this stuff down here, you can't judge me on this. You have to promise me beforehand because some of this is not looking too hot, but it's just kind of my reject shelf and I have some good looking ones in here to try to get your eye away from that. But this is a uh, Philodendron hostatum. Here's some growing at the base. There's a little at the tip too, but it's not really growing that well. There's a Hoya calistophylla. That little bit behind it is some Peperomia kimnachii that I'm propagating. Uh, <laughs> Syngonium, ignore that. <laughs> so uh, back there is a Philodendron radiatum, I think. That's what I call it. It's very small though, in comparison to the radiatums that you're gonna see on like Instagram. This is a Sansevieria Hollyi. I think they call this the Fat Boy Sansevieria. And then May May, Philodendron May May in there. It looks more beautiful with the plastic off it, but I'm not going to put myself through that right now. Begonia Imperialis. Wow, this thing looks like half eaten, <laughs> but the foliage is still beautiful. I have faith. And you see all those flowers that are coming, are coming in. I have faith. I have faith. And it's like purple on the other side. I have faith. Uh, this is a weird variegated peperomia, uh, Scandens. It's just a weird one. Uh, this is a, oh gosh, Maxillaria tenuifolia right here, or the coconut orchid. And a begonia erythrophila right here also has that red underside. Uh, this stem <laughs> is a Hoya coronaria, but I'm, I don't know. There's another Philodendron hostatum. Obviously, I struggle with these. A Philodendron, let's turn this so you can see it a little better. There we go. Uh, the Heteraceum variegata. And that's a Begonia uh, Coriaceae X Raja. That's a new one from my uh, Steve's Leaves unboxing that I did recently. Uh, there's this Begonia vitifolia right here, but, ah, and this Monstera Peru, but it's just, mm. and then there is this Calathea orbifolia that Muffin is hiding behind. Hi, <laughs> sweetie. Uh, I think this needs some fertilizer. This newest leaf came in pretty small in comparison to all the other new leaves like this one right here. So I just fertilized it recently. Uh, this shelf is incomplete but we are working on it. So right here on the right, the one that looks like Shrek's toenails is a Hoya rotundiflora. That is a, oh, I forget the name. It's like Peperomia dragon something. I'll put it on screen. This, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to figure this out. So this is a Raphidophora decursiva. And there's a Hoya croniana. Back there is a Peperomia incaniae in the center. On the right, there is a Hoya, I'm sorry, a Howorthia. I don't even remember the name. And then there's, I think, a fairy castle cactus back there. And the, <laughs> the, the nubs that are inside the plastic is an Anthurium pedata radiatum, believe it or not. 
Uh, these are all looking kind of funky, except for the two on the left. Uh, so these funky ones, the right one is a Peperomia bamboo stalks. Looks terrible, I'm not gonna lie. And this Codenanthe carnosa, which also looks terrible, I'm not going to lie. But these two look fine. So it's the Begonia lorantoides subspecies Ropalocarpa on the left, and then there's a uh, Sansevieria trifasciata, uh, uh, Sansevieria trifasciata honeyi gold in the back. So I'm still figuring out what I'm doing here, but I think these two plants here aren't probably gonna be alive that much longer. So up here on the shelf, the picture ledge that I use as like a plant curtain kind of deal. On the right, there is a Philodendron domesticum. I think that's what I bought it as. Once again, maybe I'm naive, but I'm going to believe it's that. There is this Serapegia linear, for the third time, a Serapegia linearis subspecies debilis. Apparently I really like those. This is a Syndapsis pictus exotica. I really love the planter. Uh, there's a Pothos Epipherdum aureum, Philodendron heteraceum lemon lime, the more neon version of this standard trailing Philodendron, a Jade Syndapsis, Syndapsis pictus Jade satin? Question mark. Another, oh no, and not another because you haven't seen any other yet, but you will see another, uh, Cebu blue Pothos Epipherdum pinatum Cebu blue. And a Peperomia scandens, kind of just working its way into this mess of aeroids right here. But I think he's full on all the others. He looks great. But yeah, I really just enjoy this mess right here. But we got to work over here before we work our way around. So I have like this above my bed here, which I really like the way this looks. So this plant shelf has a Begonia polygonoides. Then this is a Peperomia japonica. And... Y'all know that. Pilea peperomioides. But if we work our way down here real quick, I have a philodendron florida hanging out on the little lamp table. I think I could do something a little bit more showy or fun here. This looks a little sparse, I won't lie. And just a Sansevieria trifasciata uh, zelanica, the standard one. I don't know what kind of plant this is. Does anybody know what kind of plant this is? Sorry, I'm not talking to you in that voice, obviously. I'm talking to Muffin, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, this is Muffin's water bowl. Well, she has another one, obviously, but if I put a glass of water here, she'll drink out of it in the middle of the night, so I have to keep a little bowl of water for her. Uh, next to this, Aglianema Silver Queen. And then if we work our way up, here's that other Cebu Blue, Cebu Blue Pothos, the Peppernum Panatum Cebu Blue, uh, that I thought I already showed you. And then over here, I have this uh, Brasso Catalea, Brasso, Brasso Lobe, I don't know. Uh, Yellow Bird, <laughs> I'll put the name on screen. And then this Philodendron, it's looking a little wonky, I think it, I don't know. Uh, Philodendron Bipinifolium Aria, I wanna say. It's just the, the lemon lime version. Then I have this uh, Hoya Kaoyai. Discidia oantha variegata and Discidia jerry right here. There is a Sansevieria, I think this is like a black gold, I think that's what they call it. There's this little bitty uh, Plectranthus ernstii right here. There's a Senecio macroglossus variegatus and also Sansevieria in bloom. This uh, band tells a sensation right here, really kind of a work of art with that foliage. It's very abstract. There is a little Ripsalis Paradoxa on the wall right here in the little wall pocket. Monstera Deliciosa looks a little thirsty. Uh, under the bench, there's a bunch of projects, but they're like in process for YouTube. So I'm gonna make you wait on those. Uh, over in the window here, underneath the thirsty Monstera, there is another Hoya, if it's gonna get in focus. I think I went, no, it's not going to. A Hoya, Albo, Hoya Macrophylla Alba Marginata. And then there is another Peperomia incana right here. This is a, what is that? I forget, Hawarnia Zabrina, I wanna say. And, oh, a yellow leaf, I should check this out. But this, I, well, it did look better. I, I guess it still looks pretty good with all that new foliage. Holy crap, there's, wait, do you see all this new leaf? I did not know this was happening. Wait, holy crap. Uh, this is Hoya Affinity to Bretonia. Wait, that looks 
amazing. I'm not even worried about this, even though, what the hell. Anyway, uh, this is, I forget the name of this, Caloncoe or Calancho. I'll put it on screen. This is a Peperomia verticillata, they call it like the belly buttons. Peperomia, there's another one back there, so I'm not even gonna bother. And this is getting in the way. This is a uh, Ficus elastica teneki. All right, there we go. Really beautiful foliage. But let me put this one back. So I purchased this as a Hoya Matoski, as you can see the tag says, although my friend also purchased one from the same seller and hers looks a little bit more like a Matoski. I don't know if I got a different kind, but <laughs> I'll just to explain the story to you. Here's that larger Ripsalis uh, elliptica I mentioned way back when. Talansia tectorum, such a cool houseplant. I love this. I know everyone hates it, but I love it. Discidia, the, the russifolia. Another discidia right here. This is the uh, ovada. Hoya mathild, mathild. I don't know. Discidia nullaria variegata. And this looks terrible, but it's a discidia. Imbricata, or at least what's on the market as Imbricata. And then down before we work our way up the trellis, we'll do that last. Uh, this is uh, on the struggle bus, but it's a philodendron painted lady. It's where that other one came from because this was much larger way back when, but now it's uh, regressed. Begonia, my special angel, absolutely gorgeous. There's that other philodendron, the Taba Puensi I kind of mentioned earlier. And my Raphidophora. Tetrasperma, which is just kind of everywhere. And this one is another Philodendron Bernardo Pazii. There is this Syngonium macrophyllum, which you will see works its way all the way up here, which then I have this uh, Philodendron Holtonianum and Philodendron bipinifolium. You can see this huge Philodendron Arubicens red emerald right here. I've been cutting this one back. Also, Philodendron Campos Portoanum. Philodendron, there's a lot of Philodendrons here. Uh, Burl Marks Fantasy. And there's a Philodendron Squamiferum right here. Sorry, I <laughs> couldn't find it for a second. And you can see those really fuzzy red petioles that are just like the star of the show. Really, really, really funky. And I think, last but not least, we have this gorgeous, another one of those Drymonia Chiribogana's right here, but this one's getting a little bit more sunlight, perhaps a little too much, but I honestly am like obsessed with it, but I should probably move it a little bit away from the window. Thank you all so much for joining me today. If you've stuck through the long haul, I really appreciate it. I know these house mentor videos can be like movie length. I could practically submit them to the Sundance Film Fest. But uh, this is probably going to be my last house mentor I'm doing in this apartment. My lease is up in October. My rent's going up a decent amount. Uh, there's this thing going on in cities around the country uh, where the rent is skyrocketing. Maybe you've heard of this. Thank you, New Yorkers. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well done. Uh, so I have to find my home where I can settle down for a couple years till I'm comfortable enough to commit and purchase a space, which I'm not comfortable enough with that yet. And I thought I found that home, but apparently this is not that one. So on that note, if you would like to support me in any other way, you can follow me on Patreon for extra houseplant content that I do not post here on YouTube or any other social platform as well as you can follow me on uh, Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. And I also have a smattering of discount codes that get me commission in return for each code's usage uh, that I probably sprinkled around today's house plan tour, but you can find all of that and more in the description of today's video. So thank you so much for all the support. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, but thank you again for joining me today. Uh, I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.